Welcome to the Susan Brender Show. It's all about you. Featuring shows on health and wellness, the performing arts, politics, and people who inspire you to be your very best. And now, here's Susan Brender. I'm Susan Brender, and this is the Susan Brender Show. Let me take the opportunity to in- to introduce Dr. Robert Weil, DPM, specializing in podiatric medicine, orthotics, and sports medicine. He's written a column for the Naperville Sun and Aurora Beacon since 2007 as a sports doctor. His goal is to provide sports medicine information to athletes, their families, coaches, and for all readers. I want to welcome to the Susan Brender Show, Dr. Robert Wild. Hi, Susan. The sports doctor's in. <laughs> Glad well, to be with you. Well, let me say that the sports doctor is in. Um, it, it's a very interesting way to put it. Now, what, why did you call the sports doctor is in? What does that mean? Well, I um, host a radio show called The Sports Doctor every Wednesday from 3 to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time with a fantastic network, uh, all positive talk radio, Healthy Life Radio. And I also, for about 20 years before that, hosted a show again called The Sports Doctor on a a local famous jazz blues station in the Chicago area, WDCB. Uh, So one of the segments that I do, I usually have two guests to show, Sue, on my show, And my last segment is called The Sports Doctor's In, where we might take phone calls and take emails and uh, talk about what's going on. So it's a great great moniker. Well, you just led me to the most important part of this conversation, and and what is going on? So um, I want our audience to know all the information that you have to give them. Well, I'll start off with everybody knows the song, the foot bones connected to the ankle bones connected to the leg bone. Uh, I've never met a kid or a parent who wasn't familiar with that song. Uh, As a sports podiatrist, of course, my focus is the role of the foot in sports as the foundation of the body, whether you're a recreational walker, whether you're a serious athlete. And on my show, we cover all aspects of parenting the child athlete or being active yourself. Uh, So many times we uh, uh, start talking about uh, the important factors like um, uh, are you in the best shoe for you? What about women in high heels? Uh, what about some of the common concerns regarding trying to be active? Because on the sports doctor, we talk a lot about fitness, wellness, and health besides uh, the high-performance athlete. Hmm. Now, here is um, something important. We're today... So many people, so many kids especially, are involved in sports, and they're not necessarily responsible for all the things that uh, sports kind of give them uh, the chance to do. I mean, we we see people, um, young people, get concussions. We see them get all of these injuries. And now, do you recommend that anybody do sports? Well, uh, sports is a wonderful thing. But, you know, sports have a competitive nature uh, compared to a participatory situation. So sports aren't necessarily fitness. We talk a lot about concussions on the sports doctor. Uh, People want to go to my website, sportsdoctorradio.com, so they can read articles on, for example, Young athletes, one sport or many, good question, where we talk about specialization. We've all been familiarized with the screaming, ranting, raving parent on the sidelines of a Little League game or other kinds of sports activities. So there is an explosion of overuse injuries, repetitive motion injuries in youngsters who are exposed to sports very, very early One of my big-time poster boys, who was the 2010 men's Olympic gold medal figure skating champion, Evan Lysacek, who grew up in the Chicago, Naperville area. He was 10 years old when I put orthotics in his skates, which is one of my specialties. Fifteen years later, he won the Olympic gold medal. Uh, So the prodigy sports, think about it, gymnastics, tennis, soccer, dance, uh, figure skating, where you have 10-year-olds, 11, 12-year-olds doing it every day, this is a big challenge. So one of the big goals 
of all of our information on the sports doctor is preventing problems uh, and trying to put into perspective. Not everybody's going to be a um, uh, competitive athlete or a scholarship athlete. You know, one out of thousands becomes a professional athlete. And concussions is a whole other area. One of my most quote-unquote infamous articles is called Football is Unsafe in Any Age. And this is a very, very big topic. Uh, we're just looking at the um, tip of the iceberg. And within two weeks, Christmas Day, the movie Concussion with Will Smith is coming out. And it's going to be an explosion in the world of, uh, of um, concussions in football. So uh, I, I recommend every parent go see that movie. Hmm. Now, you talked about Evan Lysacek and uh, the various other people who uh, you represent and who you've helped. Tell me, give me a couple of stories about when they, when you saw them. What I'll give you a great story. You? Yes. Okay, uh, let's hear it. Yes. Uh, the, and people can go to my website, again, sportsdoctorradio.com. They can click on radio shows, and they can go to March 2010, the month after Evan won uh, the Olympic gold medal. I originally saw Evan as a nine-and-a-half, ten-year-old. I had been working with um, some great coaches, Candy Brown Burek, was his first figure skating coach, and we were doing what I do a lot, which was screenings. We were seeing some of these kids, and we were looking at, you know, are they flat-footed? Are they bow-legged? Do they have high arches? What's their body type like? And uh, I had, along with this topic of parenting the child athlete, Evan's mom, Tanya Lysacek, on my radio show the month after he won the Olympics, and, uh, of course, I had known him since he was growing up, and I asked his mother... Tanya, how did you know you weren't overdoing it, that you weren't overpushing him, that it wasn't your goal, not Evan's goal, uh, which is a big question a lot of people ask with these kids being pushed. And she said, you know, Dr. Weil, I'll tell you, Evan had to wake up at 5.30 in the morning for uh, ice time, and I never had to wake him up. <laughs> there he was on the stairs with his gloves and his hat on, ready to get in the car, ready to go at it, and uh, I always thought that was a fantastic story when it comes to whose goal is it. It's hard to beat that story regarding uh, uh, these kinds of parameters, and, and that's a big topic on the sports doctor, which is parenting the child athlete, because uh, this is a real challenge uh, when it comes to kids uh, uh, in the areas of, uh, of nutrition. We also had a mom on whose daughter was a four-time state tennis champion in the Chicagoland area. Liz Lumpkin went on to play professionally. Liz was also 9-10 when I first saw her in the office with orthotics. And uh, so we asked her great mom, Janice, uh, the same kind of question because the, the, the Lumpkins were a tennis family, and so Liz grew up hitting tennis balls against the garage. But mom said, you know, Dr. Weil, we made it real, real plain to Liz that we loved her before she picked up a racket, and we would love her if she put the racket down, that it was up to her whether she really, really wanted to continue. And because uh, sports psychology is a very, very big topic on my show, uh, and the late Jim Vickery, who spent about five years with me with WDCB in the 1990s, he was a sports psychologist, and he would say to parents, uh, there's a couple of main parameters here, parents, don't be a critic, yeah. and don't be overanalyzing, and listen to your kids, because a lot of times today, children will not want to admit that they're hurting, because they don't want to be pulled out of the game, right. or they don't want to be held back. So uh, uh, these are big challenges when we're talking about growing kids, and, and the uh, exposure to especially big-time, high-pressure sports, uh, and there's a lot of it. Well, you know, um, Dr. Wild, listen, this is um, an important subject because parents interfere a lot in the lives of their ch children. You're right. <laughs> and, and, and to the extent that... We're they, all guilty. We're, yes, we are, but how can we help it? I mean, it's we want our children to compete, to win, to, to uh, be successful, to love what they do. Um, so what do you tell a parent when they're interfering in their children's Well, lives? I, I, you know, when I hear a mom or dad say we when they're talking, you know, like we didn't do real well at the competition last week, Dr. Weil. I say to them, listen to yourself. 
about the we. I, I think uh, parents need to include the mental side of the game uh, in their own understanding where they are aware of the fact uh, that competition is not for everybody. There's a lot of pressure. And being fit and uh, looking at uh, the idea of wellness and the importance of fitness is not necessarily competition. One of the big topics we talk about on The Sports Doctor is childhood obesity, which is a nightmare epidemic uh, around the world in the United States. And uh, many times we see that participation is one of the keys. Uh, not everybody has to be a cutthroat winner at all costs. It's a big challenge in our culture because this is what the culture of sports many times is all about, is winning, 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 when the important point is, hey, are you participating? Including the rest of us, which is, you know, just get out and start walking, keep moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, so so you do advocate advocate uh, walking. I mean, walking is a very important Big part time. of exercise routine. Yes, it's one of the best. It's one of the safest. I've written a series of articles called Let's Get Them Walking, it was uh, incorporated into the whole world of childhood obesity, where we were talking about, for example, if in schools, children from kindergarten to 12th grade walked a half hour a day, you probably wouldn't have uh, the obesity nightmare uh, that we have uh, in our country as more and more schools cut back on PE. We are deluged with uh, not only junk food, which we all understand and knew was uh, a problem, I think what we didn't understand really was that the normal quote unquote American processed diet was the nightmare, uh, really, uh, that has uh, caught up with us and that a lot of it is all about, uh, uh, is all about money. So, uh, the idea of participation, uh, find an activity you enjoy, uh, walking, uh, whether you want to go to the gym, whether you enjoy lifting weights, whether you enjoy participating, let's say swimming, et cetera, uh, and build it into the lifestyle. Uh, today, the best medicine we have for reducing stress, for anti-aging, for staying well, is exercise. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, let's change the subject for a moment because you've written many articles. And one of the most important articles, at least that it says on your website, is that uh, you should not wear high heels. Ah. Now, I, I love that because when I look around, all I see is these young women and, and older women, too. You mean well, those are shoes that are designed by men who don't have to wear them? <laughs> there you go. Now, what, what, do you, what do you say to the people who come in and they've hurt their, their uh, feet? Well, I'm positive. Uh, it was my lady friend who owns spas and salons, Denise and Provenzano, had said to me, Be positive. So my article is called Women in High Heels Surviving the Challenge. And it's about the fact that, number one, uh, wearing high heels uh, puts a lot of pressure on the ball of the foot. It puts a lot of pressure on the structures above, whether it's your ankles, your knees, your low back. Uh, So there's no doubt about it that it does enhance a lot of pressure uh, in, in different parts of the body. So women who've got foot problems, hammer toes, bunions, other things, need to be aware of the fact that they need enough room in the toe box, the front of the shoe, that they're not jamming those toes in. And the higher the heel goes, the more pressure you're putting on the ball of the foot. Once you get up to about an inch and a half in heel height, you're really changing the mechanics with the knees and low back. So with understanding those kinds of challenges, we talk about things like, listen, if you're going to wear, and and women are always going to wear high heels, it's a fashion scenario, this is what it is. Uh, So we recommend some of the following points, which is number one, uh, you can strengthen your feet and ankles to have a much better chance to tolerate uh, the stress of high heels. You want to vary the heel height so that you're not in the same heel height all the time because over the years you can actually shorten the calf or Achilles tendon area uh, by being in the same elevated heel constantly. So if you alternate the heel height, if you try to stay away from super stilettos, which could be unstable 
ankle-wise, rolling your ankle because the heel is so narrow, for example. Again, if you understand that you need room in the ball of the foot, so you have to shop where you've got a, a, enough room that you're not jamming those toes together. And also, even though we tell we're not trying to drive women crazy, but if you add some postural training where you work your core, you strengthen your low back, you strengthen your hips and knees, then you will have a much better chance. You know, I've treated some gals who are serious ballroom dancers, like Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Matter of fact, Lysa Check was on Dancing with the Stars. We had these huge parties locally where we were cheering him on. Uh, he was the runner-up in that uh, uh, in that contest. And you see these gals doing super high-performance dancing in, you know, two, three-inch, three-and-a-half-inch heels. So if you understand that it definitely is something that changes the pressure. Uh, I use a lot of orthotics in heels and in lady shoes, and I think it's important to um, uh, just to mention that uh, podiatry is the profession with the role of the foot and the role of orthotics, which is all really about alignment, putting the feet and legs in their best alignment and, and causing less stress to the rest of the body many times is a real uh, a positive. So if you've got uh, uh, the gals in the audience who have had a history of problems, whether it's arthritis, whether it's problems with discomfort, heels, arches, balls of the foot, etc., then one of the most valuable professional helps they're going to get is the profession of podiatry who can really uh, chime in on uh, what are the best ways to uh, um, tolerate uh, heels, uh, Trying, trying to sell women on wearing sneakers all the time. Good luck to you. <laughs> now, nature didn't uh, create man to wear these extremely high heels and all the crazy shoes they're making today. So um, if you were to give uh, advice to some of our audience about what, what you would um, suggest that they wear uh, what would you say? That's a great question, Sue. And it, it's, what's interesting is, you know, I had a colleague years ago wrote a book, Choosing the Best Shoe for You, and the cover of the book was a collage of about 20 styles or brands. There is no best shoe for you. It's hard to beat a good walking shoe. It's hard to beat a good running shoe uh, when it comes to adding it to your collection of, of shoes, whether you're a grandma or, or whether you're a, a young, active man or woman. And this is, uh, it's important to be fit properly. Something as simple as are you fit properly, believe it or not, even in the athletic world, about 75% of people are not fit properly. They're in a shoe that's too narrow. They're in a shoe that might be too small. You know, people think, well, you know, I used to wear size 9.5. I guess I still do. I'll buy the shoes online, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so also, it makes great sense to understand what is your foot type. Uh, do you have pronated flat feet uh, that need support? Do you have high arches? Uh, do you, are, are you knock-kneed? Are you bow-legged? Because this is what's very interesting. We said at the start of the show, Sue, that we were singing the song, The Foot Bones Connected to the Ankle Bone. Almost all persistent lower extremity problems, whether it's your knees, whether it's your back, whether it's your hips, if those problems are persistent, look at your feet. Check out the relationship of your feet Half the girls I see and women are knee problems, and I'm a foot specialist. Mm -hmm. So there's a big time relationship. So you want to be fit properly. You want to be educated and aware of what is your particular foot type or foot mechanics. You know, you go into a good running shoe store, and they say, we have shoes for motion control, we have shoes for stability, we have shoes for shock absorption. So many times we see that the running shoe store is a good place to include, even if you're not an athlete, but it's a great place to include into your um, collection of shoes that you're in a good sneak, and there's a lot of great brands we're all familiar with, whether it's Nike, whether it's New Balance, whether it's Adidas, Reebok, Skechers. Uh, there's lots and lots of good shoes, and we tell parents all the time, if your children are living in good sneakers, you're smart.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it, it's um, interesting because um, many years ago, when you went into a shoe store, they would take care of you. They would uh, fit your size. They would look to see whether your foot was narrow, whether it was wide. They would do all of that. But today, when you go into a shoe store, very rarely do they actually fit you. Um, they, you know, let's think about uh, what happens when people go to places like Macy's or any of the other department stores. They don't know what they're doing, these salespeople. So you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yes, it's true. Then you, but also more and more, if you go to a good store, they do have people who are familiar uh, with brands, are familiar with styles, are familiar with feet. And again, if you include a good running shoe store, walking shoe store, then you'll really get educated regarding some of these different parameters that we're talking about. Uh, And today we're deluged with advertisements with the arch supports and shoe inserts. There's a lot of decent over-the-counter type inserts uh, uh, that could be helpful. Uh, But again, you know, one of the things I like about New Balance, uh, and one of the local New Balance, Nate Bivel is the sponsor of my show, The Sports Doctors, New Balance has width sizing. And they're still one of the few running shoe, walking shoe styles, brands, that include with style, and especially for women who many times have a broader ball of the foot, maybe a little bit narrow heel, and they have concerns. Uh, so uh, w- when you're going to a shoe store, and if you see that there is not that kind of criteria included, switch stores. There's plenty of uh, available uh, foot solutions. There's another chain of stores that really caters to uh, the particular necessities of people. So we would just say you don't have to be a great athlete, again, to include the uh, expertise of a good walking, running shoe store when it comes to being fit properly, when it comes to being um, uh, able to choose, you know, what is the best brand for my feet, uh, and to be educated. Uh, the, people can go to the American Academy of uh, Podiatric Medicine, AA, uh, PM, and, and find out all sorts of uh, uh, information regarding uh, uh, those criteria. Yeah. Now, um, we've talked all about what uh, you do for a living, and um, we've gotten a great deal of advice from you. But let me uh, tell our audience, um, we want to learn a little bit more about Robert the healthy sports doctor. Tell us about you. Uh, well, I've, uh, I've always enjoyed exercise myself. I always enjoyed a mixture of, uh, I mean, I'm a dad, I'm a grandpa. I have four beautiful grandchildren. It's great to watch. I have a brand new one who's about three months old, Griffin. I have a teenager, uh, almost 14-year-old granddaughter. It's great to experience uh, those of us who are fortunate enough to be grandparents, it's a fantastic uh, uh, experience. Uh, I'm someone who's always enjoyed the mental side of things like meditation, relaxation, uh, kinds of, uh, of uh, additions. I like exercise as a great stress reducer. You know, whether you are banging weights around, whether you're hitting a tennis ball, whether you just enjoy walking, it's great to, it's hard to be aggravated when you're exercising. <laughs> it's almost impossible to be aggravated while you are exercising. So I enjoy mixing those kinds of things in. I, I enjoy my radio show. I've been dancing on the radio show for over 30 years, Sue. Yep. I have been doing some sort of radio and it's great because, as you know, being a host of a show, you know, you could be sitting there in your shorts and a T-shirt. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's not like you're on television. And it's a great way. I, I am an educator. I, I really enjoy um, in, in including that as a, as a mainstay of, uh, of what I do. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm also a lucky guy because if somebody, again, just goes to the website and they were to just run down who have been my guests, what have been some of the topics, uh, and a lot of them are listed. Again, you'll see everything from nutrition uh, to all aspects of, uh, of psychology uh, to everything from hypnosis uh, to uh, high performance. So uh, mixing myself into that world, trying to be helpful as best I can, is, uh, is a good capsule of what I'm about, So. 
So you practice what you preach. What I, you I, I try to put one foot in front of the other, and at least some of the time or most of the time include practicing uh, uh, what I preach, absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, we have a little bit of time, but um, what I'd like you to do is uh, finish us on um, a positive note. What would you say to my guests if you have um, a chance? And I'm giving you a chance right now. So let's give you the last word. Well, again, I, the, I find that uh, uh, educating people in all aspects of sports medicine uh, and, and uh, in, involving ourselves, a lot of us are sports fans. We all have our favorite teams. Hey, the Cubs, you know. Uh, it was well, exciting. Some uh, might fight you about that. Yes, this, uh, this past year. But I am a New Yorker. Mm-hmm. I practice my New York accent once a week on the radio. I try mm-hmm. to hang in there, even though I've been a Midwesterner for, gosh, about, uh, about 40 years. Mm-hmm. And I think, again... Wellness, health, and fitness is a positive addition regardless of where we are or who we are or or what we're doing. And again, in sports medicine, there's only two things anybody cares about, whether you're a mom or dad, whether you're a participant, whether you're a fan. On the one hand, we care about preventing problems or preventing injuries, and then for the small percentage of those who are competitors, we really, really care about enhancing performance. And most of us are somewhere in between those variables or, or, or those extremes. Uh, and uh, I look forward, of course, your audience, uh, you're all welcome to join us uh, and tune into the Sports Doctor on Wednesdays, Healthy Life Radio, uh, 3 o'clock Central Standard Time, Sue. Well, that sounds great. So. I want to thank uh, Dr. Robert Weil for being on the Susan Brender Show. You know, Dr. Ra Weil, you have a lot to share with our audience, and so give your website and your radio program um, information once again. Okay, the website is Sports Doctor Radio, written out. dot com. I have a, a huge, uh, multi-thousand Twitter follower, exciting area of the world of Twitter. People could follow me at Sports Doc, D-O-C, uh, radio. And again, uh, my show, The Sports Doctor, which is repeated on various networks, uh, but it originates uh, on HealthyLife.net every Wednesday, uh, 3 p.m. Central, uh, Central uh, Standard Time soon. It's been a pleasure. I want to thank you for including me in your uh, long list of uh, very, very impressive guests. Uh, It's been a pleasure. Well, it's been a pleasure for me, and I just want to say one more thing, and that is that um, my show is really called V for Vitality. Bingo. Boy, you have that vitality. Thank you. Thank you for being on my show. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Susan Brender Show. To be a guest, email sebrender at yahoo.com. 